Probably a lot of you guys will recognize it. It's from the Mercer call. This is where the fun begins. Oh, R2 is missing. I get him real quick. Welcome to today's video, guys. All the parts from the X-Wing cockpit diorama are printed. We are going to take a look on that a little later. The TIE Avenger files were just finished and released. I printed all of the parts already in resin, sent everything down, washed them and prepared them. So I'm going to quickly show you the CAD model, and then I'll show you the real parts that are lying behind me, and then we're going to paint. We are now in Fusion. Now you can see my digital model of the TIE Avenger. On the bottom of your screen, you see the reference material. This one is, I guess it's the first scene we ever see the TIE Avenger in End of Season 2. And yeah, this is basically how I design my models. I have my main screen where I design, and then on the bottom here in front of me, I have a screen where I put all the reference material. So then let's take a look on the 3D model here. See the details on the back, on the inside of the wing, on the side, and actually also up here and down there are also details placed, and the cockpit interior. You can actually go inside here and take a look around. There are the passenger seats, left and right. I tried to model everything that is visible in the show. Also, this section here. You probably will not really see that much when the model is fully built, but I know it's there. You will know it's there. So that's the mo most important thing. And if you look through the windows up here, you could basically see it shine in it with a light or put some lighting in the cockpit. Now we can take a look on the pilot's workplace. Consoles left and right and the left and right flight stick. I really like that they put some originally used Creeplies in the TIE Avenger model from Andor Season 2. Like the ones you can see here, those parts Probably a lot of you guys will recognize it. It's from the Mercer call. Also, they use this part here from the original TIE Interceptor, as well as this part here. Although it's a little stretched compared to the original part. They also used it back here. This is more like the original dimensions from the kit part, but still not exactly that. Now let's take a look on the weaponry. We have your standard laser cannons in the middle, the wingtip laser cannons, like the interceptor, and then it has an array here on the wing. I'm not sure if those are actually guns or if it's a sensor array or I don't know, but it's there. Then we have the rockets here on the left wing and the ones on the right wing. In this model you can switch between a closed hatch on both sides and here on the bottom in the middle. Or you can remove those parts and then you can put in Gatling guns. That is a pretty cool feature I think. And the bottom gun. I also made a version that is hollow so that you can put little LEDs inside. Last but not least, a side gun. I digitally colored the entire ship so that I can use it as a coloring template for my 3D printed model. Because it's just easier to have that wing, for example, on the screen and not having like 5 to 10 reference pictures from the series. Because you never see a whole wing complete and can identify every color, so this makes it way easier. The left and right wing are actually different in the color scheme. Alright, that was a quick overview of the CAD model. Let's go painting. Here we have the front part of the main hull, That's the rear section, the roof, canopy frame, this is the cockpit interior, this is the ceiling of the cockpit, the hatches for the Kettling guns, these parts have recesses for magnets, the little panel guns. They go inside here, the wings themselves.
pilot seat. These detail parts go on the back of the ship, but I will leave them on the supports as long as possible because they are really fragile. The same goes for the flight sticks. They are so thin, you need to be really careful with the support removal. The bottom hatch and the two consoles. Before I'm going to paint, I will glue in the magnets and an M3 nut. This will go on the bottom side of the hull. And like this. And then you can mount a little stand or something. When you're working with little nuts like this, it can be tricky to get them into place where they should be. So what I do is, I take a screw, thread them in just a little bit that it sticks on the screw, and then you can handle it very well and just stick it in. You need to make sure that you don't use too much glue so that the screw is not glued to the nut. Let's test the magnets real quick. Yup, works just fine. Let's go painting. All the parts are painted now, let's take a look. The parts and the colors came out really great. Now the details really pop and you can see even the smallest details on the printed parts. But this also now shows the limitations of the printer that I have right now. The Gatling guns could be a little bit crisper, but then again, it's a really, really small part. For it to be really crisp, I would need a printer with a higher resolution. My printer right now has 50 microns pixel size. And yeah, I guess half of that would be better. But at least I only can see it on pictures when I zoom in really close to that Gatling gun. Then I see, oh, the detail is not that crisp. With my naked eye, I can see it. But now it's time to finally build a tire venter, so let's go. We are going to start with the cockpit, glue in the interior parts and remove the supports from the flight sticks. Those are so, so, so tiny. I think we should start with the seat. So now, wish me luck. Oh, 
There you go. Ooh, ooh. There you go. Consoles, flight sticks, and the seat all in. Very nice. Come on, drive. First rocket in place. Woo! Only 11 more to go. Let's see if I can get them all on in the same distance on first try, or if I have to rearrange them. Okay, last one. This is where the fun begins. It is the next day, the glue should be dry now, so we can take a closer look on the TIE Avenger. Let's go! And there it is! That model came out really really great. I really like it. I'll make some nice b-roll shots for you guys. So that concludes another successful project and this one only took two and a half months from the first sketch to the finished model. That's really fast compared to the X-Wings, it took like forever. But yeah, if you like this one as much as I do and you want to build your own, the STL files for 3D printing are now available on my Patreon and they will be available mid of June in my shops as well. So with the tire adventure done, I have some time to work a little more on the X-Wing cockpit diorama. The parts are now all printed and yeah, we are going to take a look on them now and see if we can mock out the entire thing on its display stand. The most parts are already here and the rest is still in here. So I have to bring it over real quick. Alright, here are all the parts. This is the upper fuselage that we already mocked up. That's the first part of the bottom fuselage. There are two pieces left that we need to assemble there. The side plates, the crew ladder, the pilot ladder, flight stick, um, targeting computer, 
cockpit interior, the display stand, and then I have a box with all the little parts in it, all the connectors and stuff. So now it's mock-up time. This looks good so far. Let's continue with the display stand. There's two little connectors. I go in here in the holes, and then you can easily put them together. They hold the parts in place until the glue is dry. For the mock-up, this should just be okay like this. Cockpit interior is next. Let's this over here for now. Oh, I can quickly check if this fits. Can you see that? No, it's not in the shot. Damn it. Uh. All right. Whoop. Let's see. This will here. This goes here. And then this piece. This will go here. And. All right, it's in there. I already put it in here to test the hinge earlier. All right, the rear piece. Whoops. That is quite big. Okay, let's see if I can tape this. The material will go in here. Now comes the difficult part, we need to align the upper fuselage with those pins and at the same time the hinge mechanism. The piston rods need to go into the pistons. We'll do it like this. Align the piston rods. Align the pins. One, two, all right, there's a, quite a gap because it's not holding up as it should. But nothing a little tape can fix. Oh no, you have this ugly one here. Okay, let's just turn it around. That's better. Touch the left side plate. Oh, R2 is missing. I get them real quick. Go a strip piece. Zack. Okay, so now we can do a proper hinge mechanism test. Are you ready? It works perfectly. Beautiful. So that's it for today's video. The mock-up went great. The next steps there will be sanding all the parts, gluing them together and get them ready for paint. And for the Thai Avenger, I'm going to build a little display stand. So that will be in the next video. Hope you're looking forward to that and I'll see you soon.